the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer. Amen. Amen. O Lord our God, we thank you for this new day, for the opportunities it offers us to praise and worship your holy name. We gather a thankful people. Your mercies are new each morning and your faithfulness ever sustaining us all. We come in awe of all that you have done, all that you are doing and all that you will do. You are an unchangeable God. Yesterday, today and forever, you are the same, Lord. And so this morning we offer our hearts to you. In the silence we bring our mistakes, our failings, our shortcomings to the foot of your cross. Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are sorry. We trust in your forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Our hearts are ready to receive your spirit anew today. Life-giving God, may you gift us the fruit of your spirit in this season together. May we love radically, dwell in your joy, rest in your peace. Wait patiently on your word and purpose for us and for others. Strive always to bless others with your kindness. Give freely of what we have in our generosity. Be ever faithful to our God and God's people. Live with a fierce and justice fueled gentleness and have the self-control to resist all which harms us, others and God's world. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Now as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I feel like you might like the readings today. Do you? They're quite sheep-heavy. Yeah, I do love sheep. Yeah. That's a typical Welsh stereotype. <laughs> Um, we were once driving, actually, the first time you come home, wasn't it, to mm. Wales? You'd never been with me before to home. And we were driving up to Ebervale, and there were some sheep on the road, and, it, and we were stuck. So Jez is kind of having this little panic of, what we're going to do? These sheep aren't moving. And I was like, it's okay. I've got this, Jez. And I wound down my window, and I did the call of my people. And sure enough, those sheep moved out of the way. And I think that's why Jez then proposed to me, like, a week later. Yeah, the sheep ran. Away. I'm sure that was why. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's quite the experience seeing that lean out the window, shout bar at these sheep, and then them all just trot out. There. Anyway, so I just from this this Peter reading this morning, it just feels a bit like you've got to get a bit of enthusiasm to care for people. Mm. Like, come on, muster up some enthusiasm and tend to your flock. Yeah, it's it's very much kind of making the point of of what we do isn't supposed to be a job. It's not supposed to be a burden, it's yeah. supposed to be something that we're Church willing. Church isn't supposed to be chores, it's no. supposed to be something that actually we do do willingly and do joyously. Yeah, 
I, I don't know about you, but I think me, I don't know, I think actually, I'm probably speaking for lots of church leaders and pastoral leaders at the moment, it's not that we're fed up of tending to the flock, but it's been a really intense period of tending to mm. flock, if that makes sense. So obviously, like lockdown has made ministry look quite different. It means spending an awful lot of time on the phone, mm. having the same conversations over and over and over and over with every church member. Yeah, yeah there's actually, not a lot of variety yeah, in lockdown, is there? Yeah, no, but actually as well, the difficulty of having to look after yourself and look after them by not pastorally ministering to them in the way that you might have usually. Mm. Yeah, so it's a lot more difficult to just go and visit someone if they're feeling a bit down mm. or have a coffee with someone. You've got to do it over the phone. I mean, you prayed for someone over the phone this week. Mm, yeah, it's a strange And so it was really experience. weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think it's an interesting reading kind of in this season of lockdown. Just a reminder, you know, come on, you're supposed mm. to be enthusiastic and willing and not feel burdened by mm. tending to your flock. But I think although it's talking specifically specifically to the elders is is that recognition mm. actually that it, it does go yeah it, it does, does go yeah, further of course that. that actually it's not just the job of a select few to to kind mm. of care and look after one another but actually no, it's supposed to be us. the whole body of christ who care for one another mm. I, I think this is talking in, in a particular way about kind of well it uses the word doesn't it exercising the oversight mm. and and kind of recognizing that actually part of the role is, is to step back from what was doing it and to look and say, actually, is it happening? Is it happening as yeah. it should? Um, and, and encouraging those who are who are mm. doing it. Yeah, so that, I think that's an interesting reflection, isn't it? Because I think at the start of lockdown, everyone was calling everyone and everyone was really enthusiastic to keep in touch with people and love and care for one another in that way. Mm. Uh, and now we get, we're all getting a little bit tired and a bit frustrated and a bit confused about how everything is. So it's a good reminder to us this morning to just think about when was the last time we all spoke to someone from church? Mm. And when was the last time we had a call from someone from church? And, and maybe we might be needing to do that today. Mm. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. What about the bit where it goes on, um, talking about the younger people? In the same way, you who are younger must accept mm -hmm. the authority of the elders. What do you make of that? Oh, I don't know. I, I've ranted this week about men in positions of authority that think they can tell younger women what to do not me not jez no not not, not jez. he wouldn't dare but just generally <laughs> um in the workplace how men yeah men in authoritative positions are, are quite mm. um well yeah i found them quite quite helpful in reminding me that they're in positions of authority and i'm just a 26 year old feeble woman <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I yeah, it's interesting that young accepting. I, I suppose what if the wisdom and the teachings and the guidance of elders is not actually in line with perhaps how we read the gospel as younger people? Mm. Um, I think I saw a post this morning um, on Premier on Facebook, and Hillary Clinton has said that um, for many young people, the church is outdated and judgmental and that's why they don't tend to come to church mm. um and i wonder therefore maybe if there's something in that related to one peter mm. um and this kind of verse about elders and youngers and, and just relying on the wisdom mm. and the teachings and guidance of the elder without taking anything from younger people too mm. um i mean we know more than most as young ministers that people we can look at us stuff. well no no i mean that yeah, people can look yeah. at us and, and say well actually you're very young to be ministers mm. or you you must need this and or you haven't got that experience and this and this and this yeah. and, well this is how we've always done yeah. this I, I i get that you wouldn't know that you've not been around yeah long enough. yeah yeah, well, they'll say something from like 1980, whatever, and they're like, oh, yeah, but you weren't alive then because you weren't born. Mm. So. <laughs> it does work the other way, though. It's nice it to does, be able to yeah. throw that into a conversation now and again. Well, actually, I don't remember what you're talking about because I wasn't alive. Yeah. Yet. Oh, right. So the last time you did any mission was 1992. Oh, I wasn't born till 94. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that that's, that's where kind of it's really nice where that reading finished mm. in, in that sense of humility and saying, yeah. actually, as you said, um, ju just because people have been around a long time and have been doing this a long time doesn't mean that they know everything. Yeah. And so yeah. it's saying that actually to all all groups of people, elders, younger, whatever, actually do this with humility. Mm. Mm. Just because you're one of the more senior figures in the church doesn't mean you can rock up and have your way. Yeah. But actually saying that 
there might be people that you wouldn't normally expect mm. to perhaps be able to learn from, but actually that you can. Yeah, so all of yeah. you have humility in this. God's ways come first, and we know that God can use people that the world really might not expect to yeah. use. So actually be humble in this and say, what can I learn from others too? Yeah, and in the same way, young people in all their enthusiasm and know-it-all attitude because they're fresh out of college and those sorts of things can just as well learn from... Mm the older groups and and some of the wisdom that they have and we know that from mm, from when our absolutely. supports come so and it comes back i think probably to that body of christ imagery mm. doesn't it of saying that actually everybody comes at this with slightly different um experiences slightly mm. different history different um skills and strengths so actually those who have been around for ages have something really important to yeah. bring those who have just started have something really yeah. important to bring so use both of them i like what christine says there respect is earned not demanded Mm. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a helpful reminder. Um, so Psalm 23, I don't know, this reading kind of tends to remind me of funerals now. Mm. Um, not in a horrible sense, but in a sense of, I suppose it's a common funeral reading, or certainly has been for me. I think mm. only one funeral I've ever done hasn't had this reading. Oh, it's not quite to that extreme for me. Yeah, really. it is for me, which is great because it's all the God bit and it works. Mm. You know? yeah. um, but just the great comfort that it offers, even as I was reading it, I felt kind of comforted by it. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a beautiful image, I think, of, well, it, it is, isn't it, of what that shepherd mm. should be, of mm. how God is a shepherd to us and the kind of things that he does and how he looks after us and cares for us, even in... Even in times of extreme danger, God is still there mm, comforting mm. us and caring for us. And I think maybe that relates to what we've just talked about from, from 1 Peter. And actually, because it talks there about the elders being like shepherds. Mm. And so actually, in, in reading this, it's not just a description of how God is, but how we should be to mm, one another. Mm. Yeah, I like that. That's a, interesting, yeah. I mm. like it, yeah. So thinking then, I guess about the different, the different sections that mm. I think you get in this. It starts off with that sense of actually when, just on the day to day living, if you like, um, God takes us to lie down in green pastures, leads beside still waters, restores us, leads us in the right direction, and then I guess kind of thinking just general generally in life, um, th th this is how God is when mm. things aren't mm. particularly good, aren't particularly bad, are just kind of there. That this is kind of God's reminding us that actually He's still yeah. there, giving us blessings that, yeah. that we do have. Yeah, yeah. And then if, the one thing I really like about the Psalms is that it does acknowledge that the kind of humanity of living and and how we're all on a roller coaster of emotions and things aren't always amazing all the time. And so then you've got the middle section about walking through some of those challenging and difficult and as it says darkest times. Mm. Um, but again, that reminder that God is with us. Uh, and I think I really appreciate that in the Psalms. That it does yeah, tell, absolutely. you know, it makes sure that it acknowledges things aren't always rosy and things aren't always joyful and celebratory. Mm. Sometimes they're very difficult. But, they're real, aren't they? Yeah, but God is with us. Mm, mm. Definitely. Um, just purely because we were talking about Nando's and KFC at the beginning. Um, <laughs> whenever I see, whenever I see that verse four, even though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. There's a great meme that pops up on Facebook every now and again of a KFC restaurant with a chicken strutting in front of it with that caption underneath. <laughs> and it, it always makes me laugh. And every time I read that now, that <laughs> That's image what pops into you, my the chicken, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the chicken in front of right. KFC. <laughs> but, uh, but that third and final section, um, preparing the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mm. Again, it's such a reassurance <laughs> and such a powerful kind of affirmation, isn't it? That, yeah. Yeah. Even even when we've got our hardest battles that we're facing, mm. even when everybody feels like they're against us, it's not just a case of God fighting our battles for us, yeah. but actually sitting down with us, sharing a meal with us, mm. blessing us, overflowing grace for us. Yeah. That it's not just dealing with what's there, but it's so much more than mm. that as well. Yeah, and just in the liturgy that we read before we came to the readings, um, we said we come in awe of all that you are, have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. Mm. And I was thinking about this this third section about preparing a table and, you know, goodness and mercy continuing to follow me all my life. And mm. you really get that sense, I think, of God's not done yet. God is still working mm. and God will continue working into the future before we even know anything about it. Mm. So praising God for all that God will do, because we know that God is a good and faithful God mm. who will keep working in our lives. Absolutely. And then that final point of dwelling in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Mm. Just, 
I mean, I mean, it's something we kind of touched on, I think, on Sunday, wasn't it, about God dwelling with us, that actually, because of that, then remind re, the remember re, the reminder that we're then kind of dwelling with God as well. I think I think mm. it's for, for me they're they're almost they're, they're slightly different in that knowing that God is with me is fantastic, but then knowing that actually because of that I live my whole life in the presence of God. I don't know that yeah, that feel, powerful, it feels it? slightly different, mm. slightly powerful in a very different way yeah. to God living yeah. with me. Um, it's it's very beautiful. The same thing. Mm, it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, I love that psalm. I'm glad we've had that this morning. I was kind of a bit like, oh gosh, everyone knows that psalm. Yeah, it's but... one of those ones that you get in the yeah. lecture and you think, should I bother talking about that? Surely there's not going to be anything new, but it's a nice one to, <laughs> to reflect on every now and again. It's, it's popular for a reason, I think, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So let's pray together. Almighty and all-loving God, we thank you for that amazing promise that you have given to us. The promise of your faithfulness, your grace and your love that travels with us throughout the whole days of our life. And that amazing promise, Lord, that we live in your presence. That everything we do is in the presence of the majestic God of all the universe. Lord, we thank you for that image of the shepherd for that image of care and compassion, of love and protection that you offer to all of your people. Help us, Lord, to be people that see that example and try to live it in our relationships with one another. That as we live together as the body of Christ, we might be people full of humility and grace watching over one another with love and protection, showing the world an image of the God that we serve. But Lord, help us as well to take it wider than just our church family. And in every encounter we have, putting you at the centre, loving others as you have loved us, Remembering that most important of commandments, to love God and to love our neighbour as ourselves. And so, Lord, in that spirit of love, we come before you in prayer. To lift before you our neighbours in this world. To offer to you and ask your blessing upon people across this world suffering and struggling in so many and varied ways. Lord, as we read your words of humility and grace, we know that so often this is a world hurt and torn apart by selfishness and greed. A world where humanity grasps for what it wants and leaves so many others without what they even need. We know that you have made a world full of abundance and goodness. <coughs> and yet it is a world that is so often abused. We pray, Lord, for a challenge to all people, including ourselves, to give up some things that all may have enough to survive. And God, today we just continue to pray for this world as it continues to fight the coronavirus. God, we pray for all people who are in hospitals or who are at home really unwell with the virus. We particularly pray for Chris and his family and Ian and Joyce and Tanya and her family. God, we pray to, to see a wave of your healing hand in our nation and across the world. We pray for your comfort and your peace to the families of people who are so worried and anxious. 
And God, we pray for that same peace and comfort for families and friends who have had to say goodbye to loved ones in strange and very difficult circumstances. And God, we just pray for your love and your presence to be with those people today. That you offer them hope in their hopelessness and light in their darkness as they mourn their loved ones. And God, we continue to pray for young people and students. For young people struggling with prospects for the future, struggling to find employment after leaving education. And for students whose university experience hasn't quite gotten off to the start they expected. And we pray especially for those halls of residence all across the country that have seen severe outbreaks of the virus. God, as a nation, so many are struggling with confusion and anxiety and not really knowing where to turn and who to trust in the midst of all of the virus. And so we just pray that we might see glimpses of your working in our lives and in the lives of our community and in the people around us. That we might find reasons to be thankful every day. That we might see outpourings of hope and of love and of grace. And as we think about that response, Lord, to the coronavirus, we pray for governments and authority figures all around the world. We pray, Lord, that you would grant them wisdom and humility to guide their people in those right paths to safe and secure to safety and security lord we know that this will take difficult and sometimes painful decisions and so we pray as well for courage lord in particular we hold before you the usa going through this controversial and challenging election time. Lord, may your hand be at work in that nation. May your will be done. May your guidance be upon all of those involved, that it might be a time of security and of understanding instead of conflict and hate. Lord, we lift before you the whole of this world with all its many conflicts and pray for an outpouring of your peace. And finally, God, we just lift up into your hands the names of people that we love and care about today. God, we pray for David and Janet, for Clive and Sue, for Alan, for Sharon's dad, for Frida, for Abby and her family, for Michelle and Tim and their family, for Sandra and Paul, for Susan and Nigel, for Helen, for Marissa, for Hilary's family and friends, for Susanna, for Carrie Ann, for Rose, for Steve, for Christine and her family, for Leslie, for Steve, for Sharon, for David, and for Yvonne and her family. We pray for your peace, your healing, and your love. Amen. God goes with us and we face the day ahead. Christ behind us. Christ beside us, 
Christ to our left, Christ to our right. Christ in the hearts of those we meet, <coughs> Christ in our hearts, today and every day. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you. May you learn more of God's never-ending, passionate love for you today and every day. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and everyone we love and pray for. Amen. Thank you.